for them. And now at this time, Andrea, I'm going to turn it over to you and we can get started with questions. That's great. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in on a Friday summer afternoon for Time Matters office hours. So Katie asked me to lead off by providing a brief overview of the Time Matters system. And as you can see, we're in the Time Matters training mode database, and you all have access to the training mode database um, on your own uh, desktops. What I'm going to do is take us to Matters, and we will take a look at everything you can do in Time Matters. So you can see that we're looking at a list of matters in a sample database, and we're positioned right now on ABLE versus the state of Florida. With Time Matters, you have a one-stop repository for everything about a case or matter, including the contacts, appointments and events, tasks, which have to be accomplished, which are called to-dos, notes, documents, and email. So you can see everything in Time Matters about a matter. Uh, looking at the information is very simple. You'll see that at the top of the list, there's something called the Power View. And right now, the Power View is set to the seven-day activity, which appears on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, there are many power views that come with Time Matters. So 30 and 90 day activities, which are similar. The billing view, which I'm selecting now, which will show you the time that's been entered on a matter. We'll look at the others now. A more detailed billing view. And this provides actually the dollar value of each time entry uh, with totals. Let's see if we can get those totals to appear. Let's get to the detailed billing view again and scroll down. And you can see that there are totals for your build and unbilled time. This is with Time Matters with the Billing Matters add-on, which allows for billing um, through the program. We'll look at the document view. We'll look at the side view of that. Now, normally these are much longer lists, but in our sample database, you can see the documents that have been saved to Time Matters through Word or through Adobe or Excel, and uh, they can be opened and saved, and new versions can be created from here. Continuing, you can go to the email view, so emails can be saved to Time Matters on a case, both emails that are coming in to your inbox and emails that you might send out. Most people use emails using the Time Matters Outlook link, and there are buttons that get added to Outlook that make it easy to save emails and attachments. Let's just take a look at some of the other views. We'll skip to the note view, and the note view on the right shows you all the notes that different people have put in about this case. And the notes, as you see, appear in reverse cron order. The system thinks we're in 2018 because it is a sample database. But it's a very convenient one-stop place to see everything going on on the case. So that is really the purpose of Time Matters, to put it all together for you. Um, in addition, there is a full function calendar, which we'll touch on later because there is a question about that. There is a Rolodex, a contact list. You can have contacts including your clients and opposing counsel and agencies and experts. Um, your documents, your research, that's your LexisNexis. Um, and you can see the other buttons as well. So in short, Time Matters is a complete practice management system. If you take the billing matters add-on, it's not just practice mat uh, management, but practice management with billing. All right, Katie, I'm ready for questions. All right, great. Well, since you mentioned calendar, I'll start there. Um, the first question we have are, are there calendar or appearance function changes between version 13 and 16.1? Yes, there are. There are a few. Um, now, I'm just going to be showing 16.1 because I do not have uh, 13 running on this system, but I'll talk about it, and I hope 
will explain the differences. So I'm clicking on calendar now, and you can see right away there's a reference cal calendar that appears on the left. If you prefer to have it on the right, that you just click options and say you want to see it on the right. And then uh, there are options as well for something called daily detail and work week. Now work week is something we did not see in Time Matters 13. Uh, so the week in Time Matters 13 was the entire seven day week. However, many people don't work seven days. And so therefore, you can see that there are check boxes for the work week to control what days are considered part of the work week. And there's a work week view. Now let's see if we can get some data to appear on the screen. I'm going to bring up a monthly calendar. And we're looking at Robert S. Brown. And, and so here we have a monthly calendar. This is a sample database. It's not terribly populated. Um, but let's, uh, let us look at the 12th. So let's go to the work week view. And so you can see, this is a new view. You didn't have it in 13. But you can see that it's just showing Monday through Friday. And it's a side-by-side -side view. And you can move around using the reference calendar on the right. To get back to today, just click the today bar that's on top of the calendars in the reference calendar. To add additional people, you'll see that on the lower right, there's a list of the staff. And you can just click to choose additional staff that you might want to see and include. Not really sure who's here, so I'm just clicking a little bit at random. This is also something of a change from Time Matters 13, because when you choose uh, multiple staff, you can see that um, the, the calendar for each appears side by side, as opposed to interleaving. Now let's go to a daily calendar. I'm going to choose Mr. Brickley. Actually, let's just see what his calendar looks like upcoming. All right, so on the 17th, we can see on the monthly calendar, he has two, um, he has two um, appointments that are actually scheduled for the same time because they're calendar calls. So this is Supreme Court of Westchester, which is near where I live. And you can see they're stacked up one on top of the other. Now, let's look at how that looks in the daily view in Time Matter 16. So I'm just going to go back a few days. And uh, you can see that these calendar calls appear side by side, so they don't stack. Now in version 13, you could do it one of two ways. You could either do it this way, as you're seeing now, or in Time Matters 13 in options, um, there would have been an option in this screen for something called the classic view. And the classic view would allow you to stack dates, one on appointments, one on top of the other. Whether you need a classic view or not really depends on your practice and, and how many items you need to calendar at a particular time. You also have the option of simply setting up uh, a list view that meets your requirements. So I'm going to go to uh, the list view for, for uh, David Brickley this week. And you'll see that both of those appointments appear. So you can use lists to control what you see. Um, these are customizable. These columns can be customized for what fields of information you want to see. And this can be printed. This can be sent to Excel, and so on. And there are other views as well. So let's go to Robert S. Brown. And we're looking at everything for this month. So I find this is an underused feature, that of simply going into the lists and setting them up to meet your needs. Now, just like matters, there are power views here as well. So if I wanted to turn on a power view for the appointment itself, I could do so. So you can see uh, we just uh, clicked on signing of irrevocable trust documents for a uh, trust and estates matter. On the right, the power view shows us the detail. And this is a very nice feature.
All right, so that really is it. Those are the, the main differences between Time Matter 16 and Time Matter 13 calendaring. Okay, great. The next question I have for this session is, um, could you tell us a little bit about the QuickBooks link and maybe make some accounting suggestions? Uh, sure. So there are two ways of setting up the QuickBooks link. Uh, one is where you're going to be making your billing entries in Time Matters. You can see there's an Add Billing button in the toolbar. And sending those billing entries over to QuickBooks to bill from QuickBooks. The other way is if you're using the Billing Matters add-on to create the bills in the Time Matters program, then there's a QuickBooks link for that too. And what that does, it sends over uh, ledger entries for your invoice transactions and your payment transactions. So there are really two possible QuickBooks links we're talking about. Now, which link you'll want really depends on what you've decided to use for your billing system. And that's probably the most important thing to decide. Uh, some firms use QuickBooks for billing. Some firms prefer to use a legal-specific billing program for billing. And there are several excellent ones. One is PC Law, for example, that is a well-known uh, legal billing program. Um, Time Matters has its own billing add-on that will allow you to create bills. So um, the first that's really the first thing to decide. How am I going to get the bills out? What program do I want to use? Um, where am I going to see the accounts receivable? Where am I going to process the payment? So that really, um, that really leads then to how you're going to set up the Time Matters QuickBooks link. If you are simply setting it up to send billing entries over, that's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to take you through the whole thing because it's complex, but I will go to set up program level. Let's see if it'll let me do this. Yes. And we will go to links and ah, uh, can't do it in this can't do this in the sample database because there's no such thing as connecting to QuickBooks in the sample database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit our sample database for a moment and take us to a very nice little, let's just minimize Outlook, and we'll take us to a nice little database in a live Time Matters database. All right, cool. So now I would expect to have some choices. And they're set up, at, uh, the billing link is initially set up at the program level. Of course, you would have to have QuickBooks installed wherever you're going to do this. Under links, um, uh, because I have billing matters turned on, right. Okay. All right, so we'll open it once again, and this is going to give us the opportunity to set up the link for QuickBooks under the assumption that you're actually sending the billing entries you create in QuickBooks uh, that you create in Time Matters over to QuickBooks for billing. So now let's see if we can do what we planned, which is to go to program level setup for billing. And, um, and one can set up the, the, external, uh, the external accounting link. So um, one would change the set accounting link to QuickBooks, and then there are numerous QuickBooks options. Uh, what I find when these links are set up is it's important first to have gone into the QuickBooks chart of accounts to make sure that the chart of accounts, the accounts that you want to use in QuickBooks um, to show fee income and reimbursable expenses are properly set up. And then there's the opportunity to match each item in Time Matters with a corresponding item in QuickBooks. Now, if, um, if Billing Matters is activated, which I'm about to do, then the link is a little different. So we're going into program level setup once again. And when we go into links, well, we'll go into billing, 
and you'll see that you have the opportunity to set up a link to QuickBooks, and then you're asked to set up the link options. So again, QuickBooks would have to be installed and configured. Now, the concerns when you're setting up this link from billing matters to QuickBooks are a little different. The kinds of accounts you have to have set up already in QuickBooks, things like the bank account, uh, the bank accounts for your operating account, uh, the bank accounts for any trust accounts, a trust liability account, a suspense account, accounts receivable account, plus, of course, the income account. So I'm talking about it pretty quickly, but actually the process requires some upfront planning to set up the chart of accounts correctly in QuickBooks for this purpose. Now, I think it's going to tell me when I click it that I don't have QuickBooks installed, which not exactly. It's not bugging me yet for that. But you can see that um, uh, I don't have QuickBooks installed, so I can really just talk about it. But I think you can see some of the options. How are you going to um, How are you going to update uh, Time Matters uh, with new clients and create customers and jobs in QuickBooks? Is it going to be a two-way street, whereas QuickBooks customer and jobs also get added to Time Matters? Um, whether you're going to synchronize manually or automatically. Um, when you add a customer, uh, when a QuickBooks customer is added, does it become a Time Matters contact or matter or both? So there are, there are a number of considerations, and further there's a matching of the account. So I'm talking about it in broad terms rather than setting it up. The setup process is pretty involved. But I think the first thing is determine what your billing program is going to be, and that will determine the nature of the Time Matters link to QuickBooks. All right, Katie, I think we're ready to move along to the next question. OK, perfect. Our next question is surrounding Time Entry Advisor. Uh, the customer notes that Time Entry Advisor seems to only work if your entries are marked as billable. If I need to remember to mark it as billable, I would have just billed it. So I had, yeah. I had to make a trigger to mark every record type as billable when saved. Is there a better way? Well, actually, there is. Let's start with the complaint, which is a good complaint, namely that you can't, uh, you can't get an appointment or a note or an email or anything to show in the Time Entry Advisor unless you've actually marked it as billable. So how do you do that? I'm going to go back to our training database. Great. Because we have all kinds of things in that training database. So let's look at a monthly view, right? And just just to talk about this point, which is a which is a legitimate point, um, you can see that there are a number of checkboxes that appear in the event form and other forms in Time Matters, and one of them is billable. And whoever called this in was absolutely right. Unless it's marked billable, it won't be picked up by the time entry advisor. So what do you have to do to get it always to be billable? And that is where Time Matters form styles come into play. Now, Time Matters form styles means that you can customize the screens in Time Matters extensively. So for example, if we're talking about the matters, when we open up ABLE versus the state of Florida, I'm trying to get that to open up, come on. Right, so um, you can see um, customizations would be things like on the left toward the bottom, area four, date of incident, description, location, and index number. So these are custom fields that were added because this type of case is actually a plaintiff's personal injury case, so statute of limitations and so on. Whereas if it were a real estate case, we wouldn't want to matter. We wouldn't want to see any of these fields. We'd want to know about buyer and seller and block and lot and other things like that. So 
that's where the form styles and time matters come into play. I think I'd opened that record a few times. So let's look at where the form styles are and how to go about customizing, because this has a direct bearing on the question about marking, um, marking as always um, billable. So we're going to go to Setup, Templates, Form Styles. And let's look at the form style for events. And you'll see there's one called Default, and there was one set up called Conference. Now let's open up the default one, and you will see here are all our checkboxes yet again. So let's get a right mouse click on that field, and we'll customize that field. And do you see you have the option to automatically check it on Add. So what that means is if you have this set as the, as the default, whenever you create a new event, the billable checkbox will always be checked. So that's good, and that takes care of events. We'll just save and close this. But bear in mind, you have other record types, and you'll need to do the same thing for those. So still in form styles, under record type, we'll click on the drop-down list, and we'll go to the next, which is to do. And there are a couple of there are a couple of them, but generally you just have to do it in default, and it's going to apply across the board. So once again, a right-click customize field on billable, automatically check on add, and save on close save and close. So by just updating that checkbox field in the form styles, what will happen then is when you create a new record, you'll see that that checkbox field is automatically checked. Just create it now. And you can see it. There it is. It's checked. And therefore, this item, if you did not bill it at the time, would show up in the uh, time entry advisor. So I think that's the preferred way to handle it. If you're going to use the time entry advisor to track whether, in fact, everything you've done has been billed. All right, great. Now, our next question um, is calendar banners or an all the customer would like to see if we could add a calendar banners or an alternate solution where you could place an event at the top of the calendar and not take, have it take up the whole day view. I think that's a really excellent idea, and uh, I think that should be submitted. Um, what is it, ideas at LexisNexis.com? As something that should be considered in a future release of the product. Because many times uh, somebody will have an all-day event, like um, you know, an out-of-office conference, and they don't want it to take up the whole screen. Uh, currently, I do not believe there's any way to accomplish this in Time Matters. And I think it would really have to be addressed um, as a feature to be added to the program. I think it's a good idea. And if I can jump in there a little bit, I'm going to um, actually pull the screen over, if you don't mind, yeah, and okay. show a customer how they can do that. So you've got a way to do that? That's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, if you just let me know when you can see my screen. Yes. All right. So you guys, you should be looking at the Time Matters uh, support homepage. And if you're not sure how to get there, you can always Google support for Time Matters. But you can also start at Time Matters. And click here under support. Choose Time Matters. And you're going to actually see a lot of different tools that you can utilize. I'm going to go, click into the Technical Support Center. So that's just the long way in case you can't remember how to get there, right? Um, but right here at the bottom, you'll see this great, do you have ideas for new Time Matters features or enhancements? So just click there. It's actually going to give you tm-suggestions at LexisNexis.com. And that's how you can submit any suggestions like this for Time Matters. That's great. Thank you, Katie.
No problem. And I'm going to give you back the screen, Andrea. All right. So do we have some questions? Looks like um, that was the last question I had on my list, but it looks like we had a few things come in. Oh, it does look like, yeah, they had uh, banners before. So they, a few people are noting that banners were there before and they're looking to get them back. So we'll definitely pass that information along. Um, if you do have questions, we are to the point where we are ready to take them on the fly. So please feel free to ask questions via the question pane located on your webinar control panel. I'm going to give everybody just a minute or two to uh, submit any additional questions and we'll um, go from there. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions come through. Oh, we just got one. Oh, um, good. The, we... next, the next question is, is there a way to customize the calendar view and what shows? Uh, and it looks like they're gonna type an example, but we'll just start there. All right, so the Time Matters calendar um, customization is done by clicking on calendar and going to options. And when you go to options, you start with general and you indicate what do you want to see. Do you want to see the toolbar that's at the top of the calendar? Do you want to see hidden records and so on? I think these are fairly self-explanatory. One kind of cool feature is in the staff section, you can check the box and say, show me the colors for the selected staff. And so for somebody who has to manage a calendar for multiple people, this is a nice way to make it pop. Below that, there's the option to limit the calendar to include only certain staff. So you may have only some people whose calendars need to be tracked, in which case you can go to selected staff and just tag them. And then you're given the options as to what display format you want and what characters will separate the fields if you use more than one field. And, and you're, given, you're given dashes and commas and things like that. Moving to the work week and the daily view, you can select the time interval. Do you want to see 30 minutes at a time, five minutes at a time, just an hour at a time? So you can select that. We discussed before that you now have the ability to choose what are your work days of the week. Um, and also whether the reference calendar will appear on the right or on the left. You can also change the c color of the header in each, um, each item that appears in the calendar. So it can be driven by, it can be turned off, color can be turned off, can be driven by the staff or by the matter color or some other way. And, uh, you would have the you have the ability to set the colors and even mix up custom colors. Let's look a little bit at the reference calendar and the things you can do there. So, first of all, do you want to see the reference calendar on the right? That's a checkbox. Do you want to see supporting records? And do you uh, do you want to have the staff selector, which is what we can see right now in the um, supporting pane on the lower right? So supporting records, if we check, if we look at the options there, let you determine for each record that is created today, let's say we're on today, um, which records you will see and, and what fields of information will you see. So for example, if I said show me, include the documents, class code and description, Maybe there's something else I want to add. Maybe I'd like to add the matter so I can see what the matter was. 
And these decisions are made record type by record type, kind of like what we saw for form styles before. A time matters gives you that kind of flexibility. Okay. And um, all right. And then um, you'll see too that you can control the fonts, you can control the colors. Select fields allows you in the events and to dos, headers and descriptions to select which fields of information you want to appear. One nice feature is there's a checkbox to show a dollar sign to indicate that the item has been billed. And that's a very nice feature that I find many attorneys um, look for. They just want to get that visual assurance that they actually billed the item. So those are some of the customizations that you can do for the calendar. All right, great. We have uh, one kind of specific question with that. Yeah. Uh, the question is, when viewing a month view, an outlook on the first row of the calendar in view, the cells in the top left and the top right have the month, month along with the date. Mm -hmm. In Time Matters, it's only present at the top right. Is there a way to show the month in the top left cell too? You know, that's a good question. I'm not sure that there is. I'm just going to guess. All right, so we're clicking view, and I really don't see anything here that's going to let us do that. I would say a little bit in defense of this view that if you look at the left, uh, to the left of each row, you will see the date range of each row there, which gives you, I think, some kind of bearing as to where you are and what month you're in. So the first row, for example, here shows June 25th through July 1st. So it's not it's not the same as Outlook, um, but there but there is I think there is sufficient information on the left to show you what month you're in um, when you're working and and what week you're in when you're looking at the monthly view. All right, perfect. And it looks like that's all the questions we have for the session today. We may just give it one more minute, uh, if you'd Good. like, Andrea, to make sure we get everybody's questions answered, but I think we're probably good. All right, that all sounds good. All right, awesome. Well, with that, I want to make sure to um, show everyone. Oh. Perfect, can you see my screen? I wanted to make sure to put Andrea's information on the screen in case anybody would like to reach out to her at a later date um, for more information. And as always, uh, a few of those, we got some good suggestions today. Please feel free to uh, submit those to the Time Matters Suggestions box. Um, but on my end, I'll also uh, pass those along to our product team. And we still don't have any other questions. So at this time, I'll go ahead and um, Conclude the webinar. First off, thank you so much, Andrea, for your very informative session. And thank you to everyone that's been on today. And with that, I have a few follow-up reports.